I'm Fathead. I'm Courtney. We're the Dandy Warhols. And you're watching Life Minute TV. Alt-rock legends the Dandy Warhols have been delivering their unique brand of cool sound for 30 years. We're so passing. Their latest offering, Rock Maker, is nothing short of it. To make it all the more mind-blowing, they brought some famous friends along for the 10-track, gritty, edgy, mind-blowing bender of a ride. Slash, Debbie Harry, and Pixies Frank Black, to name a few. Frontman Courtney Taylor Taylor and drummer Brent Fathead DeBoer stopped by the Life Minute Studios last month for a few cocktails and a chat to tell us all about it. This is a Life Minute with the Dandy Warhols. Kind of our best records have been, or the most successful ones at least, have been based on a rule. We like to have a guideline even if you go outside it. So this one was every song has to start with a metal riff, <laughs> a heavy guitar metal riff. <laughs> And they can wander off, obviously, if you've heard the record, you know, they go e everywhere from the Ramones to Nick Cave to Sabbath to Pixies. Yes, it sounds awesome. So how did you come up with that rule this time? Wanted to make a metal record. Yeah, we tend to like to do... Unusual metal record. Yeah, we like to do things that either aren't being done at all or just aren't being done in any kind of way that we are satisfied with or we just you know we're the garbage men of rock <laughs> the song that ultimately had slash on it i got far enough with that that pete heard it and went oh <laughs> this is really cool That was the first one of, of those great icons that we have on this record. Just the song, that track itself, Help You With Your Problem. I just really wanted that 1970 Vietnam vet acid rock. Classic, just LSD tripping in the foxholes. How did the collab with Slash come to be? The discussion came up, you know, who is the best? Because Brent, I, and Pete all are guitar players. And none of us have those kind of chops. Or, you know, we just don't have any experience doing it. So who, who would we get? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Who would be the best guy to get? And uh, my friend John Fell, who's a pretty awesome guitar player, he said, you know, Slash is, you know, he's the purest of that he's probably the last of that there is there's no hipster in slash he is just an absolute genius guitar player super melodic completely steeped in that thing you know he's just he's just the best so we sent the rough mix of the song and he got back to us in like less than an hour he, he really apparently dug it a lot yeah he's a fan i'm sure yeah, all those guys. I remember bumping into Axl Rose here in New York at a party, and I went up and said, hey, I, I played drums in the Dandy Warhols, and just instantaneously he's going, oh, my God, we love your band. We, which I was a little bit surprised, but then again, not really. Of course, Debbie Harry as well. It's strange, but it's true. We hung out with Debbie and Ice T one night about 20 years ago. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Were you yeah, fans it's, of them? It's extremely cool. Yeah, for sure. Well, life changing, actually. When I was a kid and Debbie Harry did Saturday Night Live, 
you know, I thought that was just absolutely the most beautiful a human being could ever be or, or achieve. And I remember walking down corridor B and a bunch of the popular jock kids, you know, eighth graders or seventh graders, were at the end of the hall. Somehow just knew they were going to be talking about it. I guess because Monday, you know, yeah. kids always talk about what was on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> And they're like, oh, jeez, oh, man, freak show. Uh And I (laughs) just slowed down and knew that from here on out, it was me against them. Uh. (laughs) And Frank Black from the Pixies. He and I have been friends for... Um, I don't know, 10, 10 or 15 years. So that was just incidentally being on the phone with him. We just want to get everyone still alive that we love and adore while we still can. He was in Zurich with f- his four of his teenage sons on Pixies tour. He just gets a bus and put his sons on. I thought, That's a, quite a commitment. And he said, yeah. Courtney, when you have four teenage boys, edification is everything. I said, well, are they Giger fans? A friend of mine that uh, with Chris Stein also happens to run the Giger estate. So I said, uh, you know, he came back, oh, I'll ask them. And he came back and said, uh, well, that went over like gangbusters. Uh, <laughs> uh, what should I do? I said, well, I'll, I'll email you with him right now. So they got, you know, tours of the estate and the mansion and the museum and everything. And he uttered those wonderful words to hear. Oh, thank you so much, Courtney. <laughs> if there's ever anything I can do. Uh... So, <laughs> you know, like... As a matter of fact, there is. Yeah, as, as you're hanging up, you're like, oh, wait, I got to call him back. And he was cool. He goes, yeah, my, my 14-year-old son is my recording. Oh, we could probably bang this out next time we're at a hotel. <laughs> so that's how that happened. And even better, Peter in, in the band, our guitar player, is kind of the main engineer, the recording engineer. And he sent the wrong song. We didn't know that until it came back. And <laughs> that's what I said. I was yeah. like, oh my God, no. Because Dancing With Myself, that track started out as like a Dancing 4 kind of vibe. And it, as it evolved, it became more Pixies. And so I really wanted to get Charles on that one. And what Pete sent him was Love Thyself. And so that came back and, and he, he didn't really do any solo or lead or, oh, or, or no. thing. So it really wasn't feature, you know, it was just amazing textural, cool stuff that, of course, again, we're dealing with great artists that none of us have those chops or would think like that or could do that. So I had to call him up and go, did he send you the other one? And so we have him, so he said, yeah, just send it, I'll do it too. So thus, he's on Dancing With Myself as a feature, but he's also on on Love Thyself. There you go, you got two for one, by accident. Unbelievable. Yeah, I would never ask so much, particularly not of him. He's a very private person, and you know. Well, it's really telling that you got all these, you know, hard to get people, you know. Cause I was born in the summer of love, and I lived through the summer of hate. Tell us about summer of hate. If anybody thought 2020 was a summer of hate, God, this summer is gonna be, you know, I think that song's gonna have a comeback. It's going to get gross. It's going to get grosser, I should say. Or it might be lovely. (laughs) I'd like to help you with your problems. Problem. Problem, yes. It's a more cynical. One problem. There's there's multiple. (laughs) I added an S. It's far more (laughs) cynical when it's just... You want to help with just... I'd like to help you with your problem. The the main problem. Yeah. (laughs) Or maybe even not even the main one. Just the problem, whatever the problem is. That is about a specific person. So I don't really want to go. I don't want them to know 
who it is. You have people in your life and you like them or you, you know, they're just part of your family. I, I've lived in the same town my entire life. Never moved anywhere else. Really? And I'm a really, you know, I dig in deep and I just there. So I have a lot of the same, you know, friends that I had when I was 10. But not the ones who didn't like Debbie Harry and Blondie. <laughs> they, those were friends. no friends of mine. <laughs> they, they would have wanted to punch Courtney. <laughs> How did you guys get together? I'm sure you're sick of telling me. We're story, cousins. But I don't care. We're cousins. Peter and I started the band. He moved back from New York after college, but we had been friends in high school. We met. He was a sax player. Uh, Woodwinds probably played clarinet as well, and I was a percussionist in a symphonic camp for high school kids. We were new waivers. Had high hair. <laughs> Eyeliner. Did you guys always know you wanted to be musicians from the time you were little? Yeah, since I was cognizant, I'd say so, yeah. Four or five and you years always old. Knew drums? Yeah, I was probably four or five. Uh, wow, well, I was really? kind of forced into drums because I kept banging my head against the wall. <laughs> and my my mom mentioned it to the doctor because I would I'd play the exact same song over and over. And Give me the Beach donk, Boys. Donk my forehead to the rhythm against the headboard so it would go so after hours and hours of this of seeing your four year old doing this you know I I have kids now so I would definitely have been standing there in the doorway going there's this is this is something wrong here or you'd worry so she mentions the doctor and he prescribed because I don't think they had all those kinds of pills that everybody has now he prescribed drums. Really? Yeah, he said he likes rhythm. Get him a drum set. And then I just sat there on that for like the next 12 years of my life. It was give me the beat, boys, to fill my soul. want to get lost. And he was a huge Beach Boys fan as a little kid. So he thought the guy was saying, give me the Beach Boys to fill my soul. I thought it was somebody singing about my favorite band. But <laughs> it, so it, at four years old. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, my amazing. first my first moment was also at four and it was Killer Queen. And I, I was, you know, little and I remember looking up at all the grown ups and they didn't notice that this was different. All points are equal on the continuum until you hear Killer Queen. And then all points are not equal on the continuum. This is something what in the hell i've never felt like this before and i subsequently tried to you know i would stay up but pretend i'm going to sleep which my parents must have been over the moon about that and i'd oh he must be asleep already wow he's tired but i would get up and i just put my ear next to the radio and turn that dial and try to find out where that song is going to come out of again and then i heard radar love so i clearly found the classic rock station <laughs> KGON, Portland, Oregon, still a station. Um, That's a life changing tune. So, yeah. Mind. And I, I think I have, a, I have an older brother. And then we had, of course, big kids that would babysit us. So I heard the, I, I think I, somehow I must have put together that that was what it feels like. The sound of that, what I feel, that must be what it feels like to be cool. Hmm. And that's sort of been a. Well, you worked that out that. early. That is what it sounds like to <laughs> <laughs> still to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. It's, those songs are cool. They're really cool. They make you feel cool. Yeah. And what side of the fan? Like, how are you guys related? Your mom's side or your dad's side? Or? My dad, his mom. So early days, it was weddings and funerals that we'd see each other. Yeah. And, and Courtney always tripped me out. He'd show up with the wild, amazing suits and his hairstyle. And, and you know, he's like, skinny with the makeup and his and he always had to hold his head to the side because his hair would like go oh, like, was in high you know? school. yeah right. yeah and and i you know i'm you know a few years younger than than, than courtney but just enough of a gap at that age for like an, an 11 year old to be tripped out by this 16 year old or you know whatever that's a sort of real cool cousin you know and also just very unusual guy isn't he 
And how did you know? Like, how did you get together and know that you guys were both musically inclined? Uh, that well, at first his band opened for the Dandies, and then uh, the DJ craze hit, and our drummer just up and quit. And and I remember Kurt Loder. We were watching uh, MTV when the news came on, and it said Dandy Warhol's drummer has quit to pursue a career as dj his 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 dj his dj name and loader goes and he, he looks down at his paper and goes he will be replaced by uh front man courtney taylor taylor's cousin brent de boer around a long time we have been around for a long time and you guys are touring right now like what's the tour look like it's been going extremely well I've, i thought the shows have been fantastic and what do fans get when they see you play live a massive this, concussion of rock and roll and and judging from this from the amount of smoke and what it exactly the aroma is i'd say they get pretty stoned <laughs> Yeah, we're a tripper stoner band. That is a fact. Yeah, it's a psychedelic trip, man. That's the whole idea. Make your crappy things that are dragging you down, make it go away for as long as you possibly can. You know, music is amazing like that. It's a transcendent experience, or it should be. You know, and whether it's, whether you're, I mean, it doesn't really matter what style, you know. People don't have to think that the music you like is cool or beautiful or even valid you know music is just what an abstraction you know you can burp, 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 clunk clunk clank clank you put those sounds together in the right order and people just feel better or they start wigging out their bodies start convulsing and joy and happy bliss and, everything. and at this point you know probably half of all music i listen to is the dandy warhols it just goes straight to the root of whatever the problem is and I either don't have to think about it or I think about it and realize that it's fine when this music is on. That's what we've done for 30 years is just try to make a tool for enlightenment or advancement or making yourself comfortable enough to face your own <laughs> lack of psycho-emotional growth or whatever your crap is. Everyone's got the same crap, right? you know. But that's, yeah, music is a is an unbelievable tool for for you know the self help psychology oriented people, which our band are definitely that. That's what we're made of. I love it. I love that. What's the first album you guys ever bought? I was seven, six or seven, maybe. I had heard Van Halen, 1984. So how old was I? I guess I was more like eight or nine. I just heard a song on the radio, and my dad took me to the, I said, you know, do you have this record? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> J.D. We, JD did not have that record. He, he pulled over and got that. And then at the same time, there was another song that he had heard, and uh, the, he's like, oh, these guys are pretty good so he got the minute work the that land down under album so those two came home on the same day and i played the hell out of them just loved them and my mom was really upset because there's a baby on the cover of the album smoking a cigarette <laughs> and what was your exciting first album you ever got god i have no idea probably kiss alive ah that was mine actually why do they call you fat ed I used to have a really fat That's hairstyle. Hair. Dude, it was like... He used to? <laughs> it was like all over the show. Oh, shop. it was like that. Those early 2000s years. It was It was the great. biggest head. Where's your, where's your drummer, big hip, fat head, whatever his name is? And we're like, fat head? Ooh. 
that works. I think it's so neat that your family and that you like that. Like, what do your families think now? Were they supportive when you guys did Absolutely, this? Absolutely, yeah. My dad, my, both my parents, they would they would go to every concert within an hour's drive, wow. at least, that I ever played in any band. They they never missed a Dandy's gig. Uh, they could not have been any more supportive. They never said, oh, yeah, well, that's good fun. You're going to have to get a real job after that or whatever. Mm -hmm. I always just wanted to somehow make a living in music and then this became the ultimate thing and and it's it was just a massive life-changing moment of a little series of events to be able to join up with cousin courtney and hit the road we had a european tour coming up of course the stress is outrageous and we have a bona fide hit global hit at the time You had to graduate from college early <laughs> and hit, to hit the road. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, we had eight days to get it all done. All the rehearsals, everything had to be done, and then just away we went. And then it was just cobblestone, winding streets of Madrid and Paris and <laughs> man, Vienna. It was rad. Those are really fun times. I mean, it's still fun. Life is, you know, great to go to these places and have these friends there that we've known for 25 years that's super cool too yeah um i guess old friends are really are really important to hear more of this interview visit our podcast life minute tv on itunes and all streaming podcast platforms <laughs>